What's the most fucked up thing someone has told you about themselves after barely getting to know them? This was a patient. Middle-aged guy in short-term nursing home for a hip replacement or something. I'm trying to get to know him to figure out what kind of skills he may need to work on in order to return home safely. I ask him do you cook? He responds, I used to. But then the cops found out. Years ago I went on a date with a guy I met via AOL personals. Within five minutes of the date, he told me he was working on a book about speed seduction. And he was so confident he could speed seduce me. He already had a condom on ready for me. I hightailed out of there full speed. I googled him a while back and turns out he ended up self-publishing the book. She said that if I wanted she would kill her parents so we can live at her house. I never went on a second date with her. Well, at least you know there's a crazy woman out there. That's willing to kill her own family for you. That's something. I was doing a service call at a house and just making smaller talk when the owner mentioned out of the blue that she's married to her uncle. I've been there twice. And both times they felt the need to tell me. It's kinda weird. Doesn't that make her her dad's sister-in-law? This happened to my wife. We had just moved into a new house and the lady next door came over to introduce herself to my wife. As she was talking she informed my wife that her husband was mad at her because she had farted when he was going down on her. I think I would have a difficult time not busting out laughing if someone told me this. And remembering it every time I saw her. I was a teenager working retail and there was a fidgety older woman I worked with. I was always very nice to her. But she was just a co-worker at the end of the day. One day she told me about her grandpa molesting her when she was young. Her parents didn't believe her. So it continued until he died. She said she was glad he died and was happy at his funeral. I really had no clue what to say since this was out of nowhere. I just said I was really sorry it had happened. Felt really bad for her because I could tell it still really bothered her. At work. Me. Hey new guy. Nice to meet you. New guy. Yeah you too. Check out this picture of a dude in a coffin. That's my nephew. He was killed in a drive-by last month. Me. Let me show you where the coffee maker is. I went with my dad to do an estimate for some work on a house. When I met the owners I literally only said hi. Your house is gorgeous and the wife went into full detail on how they'd bought it the year before because. Their 15 year old daughter was attacked and raped. She ended up pregnant from it. They were super religious and convinced her to keep the baby. They pulled her out of school for a year while she was pregnant. They bought the new house in a new school district so she could go finish high school without having to face her former classmates. They were now raising the baby as her younger brother. I was pretty much speechless. What do you even say to that? That he broke in and beat the shit out of a guy who raped his daughter, put the guy in the hospital, with a baseball bat. I totally get why he did it but I have no idea why he thought it was a good story to tell a new coworker. I have no idea why he thought it was a good story to tell a new coworker. He took one look at you and was like, this looks like a guy who would rape my daughter. I'd better not let him get any ideas. Lady at work started telling me about land she owned in another state that is not part of America. She then started talking about how every American is a bond to the government. And your SSN is just your bond number. Wealthy people own those bonds and own you. She started naming off prices of bonds based off people's races and genders. This was all said after I simply asked her what she was doing with her long weekend coming up. Weirdly enough I had a do tell me all this unprompted during my first night shift at Dollar General. All I asked was if he wanted his change. I had to stay late when I was a manager as one of the female employee's parents were running late. She broke down to me about how she had been sexually abused by her best friend's father and that he had been doing it to her best friend for years. He was in jail after he did it to her as she reported him and sadly the daughter hated her for turning in her father as she thought it was normal behavior. She had only been working there for a few weeks at this point and we had probably only worked together a handful of times so I really didn't know her that well yet but I think she just needed someone to know she was struggling with it and someone to tell her it wasn't her fault and what he did was wrong. I think it's easier to tell a thing like this to someone you don't know well. I'm good friends with someone now who, at the beginning of our friendship, confided a similar thing to me, and they hadn't told other friends they'd known for much longer. I think there's a bit of safety in the idea that even if they get rejected by this person, at least they didn't know them well. 
and it's a hell of a thing to hold on to loan, you know? This guy I'd worked with for a couple days told me he had been meeting older men at a state park and having sex for money. We worked at an upscale deli. Hustler out there slinging salami day and night. New roommate told me her current boyfriend got kicked out of college for sexual assault and was under investigation for another case of sexual assault. Wanted my opinion about it within like two hours or meeting. Completely disregarded that my opinion was run. Everyone keeps saying that. But I don't think any of you understand how complicated this is. Hitchhiking through New Zealand. I got picked up by a semi-driver. Awesome guy. But an hour into the drive started unloading every bit of personal information he could. How he's cheated on his wife. Screwed the company out of money. Stolen items. It was like I was a priest in a confession booth. When I asked him why he told me all of that. He said it's been eating him up inside for years and telling me helped get it off of his chest. He said I had no idea who he or anyone he knew was. So it felt like I was the perfect person to unload on. I mean you can't argue with his logic. You all will probably never see each other again so he's safe from repercussions. Guy walks into my bar which is down the street from a hospital. He's pretty quiet. So I'm not trying to push for a conversation. Next thing I know he breaks down crying at the bar. I go to ask if he's okay. If I need to call him a cab etc. He told me his teenage son had just died in the hospital down the street about an hour earlier. I had no idea what to say or how to react. I would say that's not a matter of oversharing. That's someone whose life just shattered and they need help. They were desperate. And saw the bar as somewhere they might find solace. Poor guy. Girl at the gym told me she was in an unhappy marriage and never loved her husband and as soon as the kids finished school she was leaving him. Pretty sure I didn't even know her name. I had a guy tell me that he and his cousin slept with the same person. Another guy telling me that when his cousin committed suicide. He wanted to drink himself to death. This was a first date. I also had some girl I went to middle school with randomly tell me over Facebook that she lost her virginity to her cousin. WTF is with the cousins. When I used to work in construction I was on a project with this old guy that told me he was once accused of raping his daughter but after an investigation was conducted it turned out it was his brother who committed the crime. Way too much information. Had another idiot showing everyone pictures on his phone of him and his stripper wife having a threesome. Can't say I miss the trades. Yep. Had a drywaller say. Hey Mr. Canoe. You want to see some naked pictures of my wife? Then he rushes out to get them before I could say no thanks. He comes back and all pissed off. They had been on the dashboard of his truck but someone had stolen them. Yesterday I was walking with a friend of a friend after my friend left me. He started telling me benefits of Nothup and his pervertness out of nowhere. Like telling me how it had affected him and his life personally. He told me how he masturbated in a train sitting with all his friends in such a way nobody noticed. Then he goes on telling me how he asked his father for help. For which his father asked him to drink buttermilk because apparently it reduces the addiction. Such a way nobody noticed. In such a way nobody mentioned it. We were 17. First year of uni. And I had known the guy for a week or two tops. Out of fucking nowhere. He tells me he had a kink for getting farted in the face by girls. I pissed myself laughing and we became good friends for a while. Was he into piss too? I started working at a flower shop as a delivery driver and on the very first day of training the woman I was paired with proceeded to tell me all about how she was still processing her parents' deaths. Went into great detail. Explained the stresses of funeral arrangements and how she had to dress her mother for the viewing because her siblings weren't able to handle it. Even told me about a text message she believes she had gotten from her mother after she passed. I did my best to be sympathetic but we were out on a 4 hour delivery drive and she definitely took the opportunity of a captive audience to dump a serious amount of baggage. At a certain point I just didn't know what to say anymore. Edit, her parents had passed away 3 years prior when we talked. My favorite ever was some stranger outside a bar. Seemed normal enough until she said my husband and I used to do meth. But we don't anymore. I applauded her on this and then she followed up with yet. Yeah, now we only have meth weekends. Edit, typo and thanks for the awards. Reminds me of Mitch Hedberg, I used to do drugs. I still do. But I used to, too. Oh. I have another one. Girl I worked with but didn't really know beyond her name. 
told me she liked to hold her boyfriend's penis and do the aiming for him when he took a piss. That's fun. I sat next to this quiet kid in my Spanish class. He was awkward and had a subtle speech impediment. One day, I tried to spark conversation with him and he told me that he considered murdering his parents. Bet that conversation ended quickly. I made the unfortunate mistake of inviting my old neighbor over when we were having a party. He had like five gins in my kitchen and confessed to an unsolved murder in Nunavut, Canada. He's in jail. At a work Christmas party. It was mentioned we were going to Vancouver for a beating next month. New guy is so excited he's losing his mind. He proceeded to tell us about how they have the best massage, happy ending kind, pollers. He went on and on about how great they were last time he went. He also told us about etiquette and what to expect. He was married with three kids. And all I could think of is what kind of shit is he not telling me if he is this open about this. Used to work at a ski resort and was working in a different area than I normally work. Well this lady who I was working with found out I was slightly acquainted with her fiancé and proceeded to tell me all about how his family hates her and is mean to her and all about his substance abuse issues. I don't remember all the details because it was a few years ago but she unloaded on me with every issue of her relationship and I'm like I'm just here to work. I didn't really even know her fiancé. I avoided that lady after that. After like a few hours of meeting a new co-worker at my job one of the first things she told me was how much she hated her husband and how like twice a day she tells him how much she wants to divorce him. She also showed me a picture of her ex-husband and laughed manically as she told me how she never loved him and that she just married him to spite his mom. I've met her husband she's with now and he's super cool and makes literally 5k a month at his job so I was genuinely confused and terrified to work with her after that. For some, the world is not enough. Started talking to a homeless guy outside of the grocery store. Learned he was fresh out of prison for shooting his brother who had slept with his ex-wife. A customer explained to me the benefits of a coffee enema to heal everything from my acne to preventing cancer for an hour. I couldn't get her to leave me alone because it was dead and no one was there to help. I worked for a skincare counter in a department store. Like if you don't need my products because cleaning your ass with coffee fixes it. Why are you here? But she went on about how she started her kids on these and did their enemas until they could do theirs on their own. What? Then she also grabbed my hands and kept saying promise me you'll try it. Promise me. She left after I promised. No. I didn't try it. And that's how you met Gwyneth Paltrow? First impression of a Dungeons and Dragons group. DM talks about how he went to a sleepover which was basically an orgy and had someone get a full bottle of Febreze sprayed up his ass. Edit, I want to clarify. We stayed in that DND group for the entirety of 2020 and only just recently cut ties with the DM. A lot of our Upgar or story stories could go here. I feel. A guy told me during our first shift that his youngest daughter was suicidal. His eldest daughter's boyfriend was terribly abusive. And his wife was sleeping with someone at her work. Apparently he'd just gotten out of jail after flying home from out of state. Beating the shit out of his daughter's boyfriend, his brothers, and his dad. Driving to his wife's work and beating the shit out of her boyfriend. Then driving to the hospital to hold his daughter's hand after she had attempted suicide until the cops arrived to arrest him for aggravated assault. At least he cares. Random guy I met at a party back in university told me, after a few beers, that he had killed a kitten by smashing in its head with a shovel. I quickly found an excuse to be somewhere else. Good call. That guy sounds like a full-on psycho. First time meeting a lady while I was bartending. One drink in. She proceeds to tell me that her husband cheated on her so she cheated on him with a young Jehovah Witness that had showed up at her front door. She ended up getting knocked up by the Jehovah Witness and now has a child out of wedlock. I literally never even got her name. When they went to her door. Did they tell her about the second coming? First session with a new massage therapist. Me, relaxing and enjoying the massage. Her, did you know vaccines have bits of aborted fetuses in them? Me, her, they don't want people to know. But there was an undercover video. Me, why would anyone put aborted fetus parts in a vaccine? Her, it's a preservative. Me, at a complete loss for words. Saying the first thing that comes into my mind after what the actual fuck. That hardly seems cost effective. Her, yeah, 
I don't know. Maybe I heard it wrong. She also told me all about her prior heroin addiction. Bouts of homelessness. Abusive previous marriage. And then tried to sell me some kind of $12.000 magnetic mat to lay on to heal all your things that need healing. Massage therapists should probably just shut up and let you enjoy your 60 minutes of expensive peace. Is it weird that I read through the comments to make sure none of these were me? Were any of them you? I met a girl in my high school who told me that she was having sex with her gym instructor since she was 13. She was all giggly about it and found it romantic. She told me this when she was 17 and the gym instructor, engaged to another girl, was 35 at that point of time. So you do the math. 18 year old me had no idea how to support her. She used to avoid me and never spoke to me after that. Since I tried to tell her that it wasn't love and how it's pedophilia. Four years later. I got a call from one of my friends telling me that she killed herself. She was in a relationship with another older guy. And X200B. I cried that night. I still feel a pain in my chest whenever I think about her. She opened up to me and me being a complete idiot couldn't help her out. Bartender for a while. I'm here to meet a man to cheat on my husband with. I worked with this girl for maybe two days. I'd previously introduced myself. But I hadn't actually had a chance to talk to her. And so I asked her if she had a good weekend. And the first thing she told me was she went to a follow-up doctor visit from having a miscarriage. Caught off guard. I gave her my condolences. She would loop the convo back to her miscarriage and how devastating it was every single time I had to talk to her again after that. Jesus Christ. These comments make me happy that I'm an introvert. Staying away from people might be a good idea after all. Edit, holy fuck I just remembered something. I was working at a Christian camp. And a dude that worked there that I talked to maybe twice walked up and started telling me, and my now ex-girlfriend, about how he used to hate women. And he was really addicted to violent torture porn and rape fantasy stuff. I was trying so hard to find a way out of that disgusting conversation. I tried to change the subject like three times. And then at one point I said, you know what helps me with bad behavior? Just running away from it. And then almost simultaneously my ex and I just ran away. Like, WTF was with that guy. My mother is a therapist and people can somehow sense this about her. Strangers on the bus tell her their life story. I'm an introvert. And this never happens to me. It was day one of me working at a place and the person that was training me told me she was conceived during a rape. I learned later that she did the same thing to everyone working there. I have no idea why. She was a strange person. One of my best friend's moms drunkenly told me that's how she ended up pregnant with said friend. He doesn't know I know. I just started working at a farm. On the first day my boss saw a penny on the ground and looks at me and says look at me, I'm Jewish as she bends over to pick it up. She was not Jewish. But I am. Temporary co-worker tells me she was kidnapped raped and beaten by her ex-husband. Burned with cigarettes. Hands shoved in the garbage disposal. Head beaten with a hammer. The incident resulted in a baby she somehow still has. And they're not even divorced cause he won't sign the divorce papers. I work in a small town gas station. I'm trying to check out customers and she's reciting a true crime episode to me. The conversation started with mascara recommendations. It was the craziest thing I've ever heard. It's possible to get a divorce without him signing if in an abusive marriage. I would imagine there are victim services of some kind that would help her out. Assuming she was willing to accept the help. I was talking to this girl over FaceTime and we've known each other for just over a week. I was just telling her about my day and I mentioned my co-worker named X. She then proceeded to tell me she was sexually assaulted by a guy with the same name. A girl I was dating mentioned that her dad was sleeping with her older sister. And that she would soon be next. That made me the competition. Call the police? That one guy. Told me that his ex-wife got divorced from him. Because he used to beat her. He said it just like that out of nowhere and like it was normal. He also was about to get married for the third time and was around 40. I don't know why. But people who barely know me seem to love telling me about themselves unprovoked. The one that comes to mind right now is when I worked at a call center I was sat next to a woman who told me all about her pregnancy. Not just casual aspects of it though. Like her mucus plug falling out. 
her baby daddy making Craigslist personal ads to have affairs. How much milk she was producing. I literally would turn around to look at my monitor and she would just continue talking to the back of my head. That woman assaulted my ears. I wanted to nope the hell out of there. But seats were assigned. Moms and moms to be please do not tell me about your vaginas. I promise you I do not want to know. My now Bill come over to our apartment to do laundry one day. This was the first time I had ever met him. So we are talking and he starts telling me about this chick he is banging. Okay cool. Good for him right? Well then he pulls out his phone and starts showing me her nudes. It was hella awkward. A little old lady probably about 90 years old was a regular in the mobile phone, cell phone, shop I worked in when I was younger. I always took the time to look after her helper with her phone. Anyway one day she tells me that she helped her husband kill himself as he was very ill and didn't want to go on. She starts crying and said she'd never told anyone that and it's been a huge weight off her shoulders. Another time I bumped into a guy who I'd only ever met once before and pretty briefly. I say hi. How's it going and he tells me the intricate details of his life including his teenage sister's drug addiction leading to her suicide. My wife and I were going to pick up Christmas gifts from a family member of hers. No big deal. As we were walking up to the house, my wife turns and tells me OBTW Nancy caught her kids having sex last summer. Don't bring it up. I was standing there like WTF and the front door opened. I was face to face with Nancy and the next hour I was left wondering which two had sex because I counted five kids there that day. Ages 10 17. Three girls and two boys. When we left I asked which two. Found out. It was death strange. My ex told me when she was 17 she got cheated on so she went out and sucked off a couple 50 year olds for a few months. We weren't dating at the time just getting to know each other. Didn't happen to me. But a girl I worked with once pulled our colleague. Our department manager and the director's pa into the bathroom. Pulled down her pants and proceeded to show them her vagina to prove she had no labium. She did this on her first day. This guy in college. We were both up late studying in the dorm's common room. So I thought I'd take a break and chat a bit. After a while he comes out with a story about how as a kid he hilariously pranked the girl next door. This involved stealing her dog. Killing it and putting its head on a stick. Then raising it above the neighbor girl's fence so she could see it. Oh. She screamed and screamed. It was hilarious man. She loved that dog. Holy shit. Guy immediately moves to the top of my brand new most likely to become a serial killer list. And I nope out real fast. Avoided him like the plague after that. I met a guy once at work. We talked for about 5 minutes and he was suspiciously way too nice. After a few minutes later and just to give me context. He told me he had attempted suicide several times and that he could be violent sometimes. We kept talking like it was nothing for like 15 more minutes. During all the conversation he never stopped smiling. First time going out with some new co-workers. Woman around my age, late twenties, explained how she resented her boyfriend for his habit of masturbating. As she considered it cheating on her. She also proceeded to explain that she doesn't like sex and only enjoys it when he gives her oral sex. And she will only occasionally masturbate. Angrily. Out of spite towards her boyfriend. Not only is this a very inappropriate topic for co-workers. It shows a very sad and bleak view of relationships as well as a very jealous and spiteful nature. I have been avoiding her entirely after this. In case it helps paint a more complete picture. She is conventionally attractive. Has good health and fitness. Is proficient at her job. And is making a good salary for the area we live in. I, mechanic, had a customer thank me for agreeing to work on his car. Because he had just got out of jail for sleeping with an underage girl and most places wouldn't let him in. I would have had no idea if he hadn't mentioned it. He went on to elaborate that she was 13. He was, I'm guessing, 50-ish. A girl I was speaking to on Tinder told me within the first hour that when she was about 14 a teacher at her school bought her a dildo. I had a new manager trying to shoot the shit with me. He was telling me about smoking weed in the Navy during the 70s. He told me there was a narc on his ship. So he and some friends told the narc that there was a huge exchange going down at midnight at the front of the ship. The guys fanged up on him. Beat the tar out of him. Wrapped him on a carpet. And threw him off the side. 
I asked what happened to the dude. He just said Dunno. Did anyone get him out of the ocean? Dunno. Did he die? Dunno. Nobody asked about him? No one ever talked about it again. I was like. Well. Nice to meet you Abe. He goes. Call me Pops. Fanged up on him. It's a lesser known stereotype that the Navy is full of vampires. Sitting at the bar watching a ball game with the other random bra flies one day. I'm trading typical dude banter about the game with this guy beside me. A few innings in. A few pints later. And he starts telling me about how he was raped and how he'd been through a number of therapists that all minimized his experience. I've never encountered that kind of honesty in anyone before. Let alone a stranger. All I could do was tell him it wasn't his fault and offer him a hug. I gave him my FB info and told him if he ever needed to talk to someone. Or wanted help finding resources. Etc. To not hesitate to contact me. He never did. I wonder what he's doing now. Work in retail and started a new job three months or so before this. A customer came in on a quiet morning and started complaining his church friends are jealous of him because he owns his own house. They're mean to him. It's not fair. And they're bullying him and calling him a pedophile. I respect children he said while slamming his hand on my counter. That's when I knew his church friends are probably right. He told me his wife was banging this other guy. And the only reason he found out is because he drove by the house. He was an electrician at the time, and his lawn mower was in his yard instead of in his garage. He doesn't stop. But rather when he gets off shift the dude is still there. And moved the lawn mower so he could fit his truck in the garage. Dude leaves and doesn't even move the lawn mower back. And X200B. It was the third time I even talked to this new guy. And he had already told a few other people about his problem. That was why he didn't want to work overtime anymore. Because he was still with her and afraid she would do it again. I'm not sure if this is appropriate because I was at an AA meeting. But there was a dude who admitted to watching CP to everyone after going on a rant about getting his law degree and knowing all sorts of famous people. I just sat there like, straight mouthed face with one raised eyebrow, can you rewind that? TF did you say? Old buddy had a bit of a crackhead neighbor. But he was nice enough. One day we asked him to get us some beers. We were like 17. He's like no prob. So we're drinking a few with him and he starts talking about how much he hated German shepherds. And how the old neighbors had too. One day he was walking and one bit him on the bicep and wouldn't let go, saw the scars. It was kinda gnarly, and so he dragged to his truck. Took a hammer. And smashed its brains in. He's laughing his ass off. And he then tells us that he walked down the street to the elementary school and threw it out in their dumpster. Fucking weird dude. He's since moved. Took only some beer and a short paragraph for him to go from nice enough to fucking weird. A co-worker and I went to a chain restaurant for lunch. Where we decided to eat at the bar. While filling up our drinks. The bartender started telling us about how his boss kept yelling at him for doing cocaine behind the bar in front of customers. He also told us if his boss complained again. He was going to kick his boss ass. Went on one date with a guy who told me during the date, in a car. Alone. At night. Parked on an empty street, that he doesn't experience emotions and just studies and mimics how others show emotion. He also said he views life as a video game where he's the sole player and no one else has a life of their own thoughts. Like. The Wikipedia checklist of a sociopath. I ghosted him after that. My mum's, now ex, boyfriend. Told me he secretly wrote a book about my family detailing all the fucked up shit about each member. He wrote I was schizophrenic. Was showing a vendor where our backroom at my work was. Had never seen her before. She had said she had only worked for that company for a month. She told me all about how her roommate's girlfriend got a restraining order against her and how she got arrested earlier that day because she didn't know about the restraining order and all this crazy stuff about how the other lady was crazy and lying. My manager later told me that she told him that she was wearing the only pair of underwear she owns. I was included into a group of friends through a common one. I'd known this girl for like two weeks. We were alone and she casually dropped that she likes to cheat on her BF. We were waiting for her BF. She then asked if I wanted to make out. It was so surreal. Met a guy in a pub who very quickly started talking about how he loved it when his missus shat on a glass coffee table while he lay under it. His missus was sitting next to him and she piped up with yeah. 
He loves it when I do that. Stuck driving a co-worker out to a remote gas plant to do a system install. He was kinda fucked up but assumed it was just socially awkward it way. Nope. He starts telling me about him and his dad collecting Nazi memorabilia and how proud he was of his German grandparents. Trying to make other small talk and he would just trail off answering questions and start singing to himself. Thought for sure I'd end up on the news and a manhunt would be conducted. Second best story, met the neighbor right after we moved in and she started telling me about them wanting another kid but doing the deed was hard because she was overweight and had bad knees and it just made it difficult. I'm a guy who never met her and have my kids playing mere feet away so I can't call her batchet crazy. 15 minutes into a 6am flight the person sitting next to me showing me the track marks on their arm but trying to do better. In her defense flying made her nervous so I assume she just needed to talk. Also offered me a zanx which I guess was sweet of her. Chatted with a huge middle aged dude in a bar once who after about 2 minutes. Told me that he had been in prison for bashing his dad's head in with a hammer. His dad used to beat his mom and one day he'd had enough of it. I work in retail and the other day I got a phone call from someone wanting to ask about the procedure to get some house measurements and stuff. The people who do that we gone for the day so I told them to call or come in later. A couple minute call. 30 minutes late I know about her kid. Her broken back. How she is talking to federal agencies. And a lot of extra details. Thank you person for making me stay past my shift 20 minutes. A guy who provided a room for me whilst I worked nearby told me he was involved in the Sri Lankan civil war during 2008. He told me some real fucked up shit while he was drunk on his birthday. If someone provides free booze I'm going sit and listen to anyone even if they were involved genocide. Which he was. Visited a coffee shop for the first time on holiday. Barista commented on my tattoos. I said thank you. She told me she's not allowed to get tattoos but she cuts herself to enjoy the pain and that's nearly the same thing. I found a different coffee shop for the rest of the holiday. I was at a work related event and the host broke us into small groups for icebreakers. None of us had ever met before. The first question was a generic what's a challenge you've had to overcome? Someone talked about being the first in the family to graduate. Someone was a minority business owner. Someone had struggled to figure out their job until taking extra training. That kind of thing. Then the last guy deadpan says, the biggest challenge I've faced was probably holding my wife's hand as she gave birth. In the back of a car. To another man's baby. What an incredible first and only thing to know about a person.